Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. Now, before I get into today's tip, I wanted to let you know that Mark and I will be doing a Ripple Live this Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, which means you can join us and post your questions and we'll do our best to answer your questions live. Uh, click the link below and you can get notified when we are live. So hope to see you then. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was our 60 second quick tips. Now we've gotten quite a bit of feedback that the motion quick tips are a little bit too fast. And I'll have to admit, I agree with you. It's very challenging to show a in-depth motion tip without giving proper context. So we're going to do more of our motion training in this longer format so we can explain things a little bit more thoroughly. So that leads me into today's tip. I have a great tip where I'm going to walk you through how to create an Instagram split screen using drop zones in motion and then publishing them to Final Cut Pro 10. I can't wait to show it to you. Here we go. So we'll start out in motion and select Final Cut Generator as the project type. In the preset area, set up a project to conform to an Instagram square deliverable. In this case, I'm using 1080 by 1080 with a frame rate of 30. Set the duration to match the length of clips you plan on using in your layout. Click open. Open the library, then locate the content folder and choose Vector Art. Scroll down to locate frame 12 and click apply. Hold down the shift and option keys and drag a control handle to scale the graphic to fit the frame. Give the layer a name, then lock the layer. To add our first drop zone, go to the Object menu and choose Add New Drop Zone. Name the drop zone layer DZ Bottom. Then press Shift Command Left Bracket to move it below the grid. With your Shift key held down, drag the drop zone until it's roughly centered in the bottom frame. The Shift key keeps the image from moving horizontally. Right click on the image and choose Crop. With your Option and Command keys held down, drag on the lower crop boundary to crop the top and bottom of the image proportionally. Create a new drop zone by pressing Shift-Command-D. Name the drop zone DZ Upper Right and press Shift-Command-Left Bracket to move it to the bottom of the layer stack. Right click in the canvas and choose Transform. Using the on-screen controls, again hold the Shift and Option keys to scale the image from its center. Because this grid frame is already squarish, the drop zone will not have to be cropped. Let's do this one more time, but this time we'll duplicate the bottom layer and name it DZ Upper Left, then in the canvas, move it into place and scale it until it fits nicely within the frame. The next step is to publish a grid. Select the project layer in the layers list, then the inspector. Here we can see that the three drop zones are ready to be published but I would not recommend publishing just yet, because if I publish right now, the names I gave each drop zone layer to identify them will not appear in Final Cut Pro. To get them to appear, you'll need to unpublish each drop zone, then select each drop zone in the layers list and publish it. While we're here, I'd like to give the Final Cut user the ability to change the grid color. Select the grid layer, unlock it, then add a colorize filter. I don't like the default color for remap to white, so I'll change it to black, then publish this parameter. From the file menu, choose Save. Name the generator. I'll call this Instagram Layout, then select a category. Earlier, I created a category called Social, so I'll place it there. In Final Cut Pro, create a new project set the format to square and the resolution and frame rate to match the settings you established in motion and click OK. Reveal the generators and title sidebar and locate the generator category you saved it into. Select the generator and press E to add it to your timeline. Return to the project browser and with your playhead over the generator, reveal the inspector. So here you can see the three drop zones and they're all labeled appropriately. Move the playhead to the beginning of the timeline by pressing Home. Click in the well for the bottom drop zone. Skim over a clip in the browser looking for an endpoint and click to set it. Then click Apply. 
Now click the upper right source well, skim over another clip looking for a good start frame and click to set the endpoint and apply to add it to the grid. If you look in the upper right drop zone, the subject, in this case the helicopter, is being cut off by the left edge of the drop zone. To make adjustments to the clip placement, double click on the drop zone. A bounding box will appear that allows you to reframe the clip relative to the drop zone. Heck, you can even scale the clip if necessary. For the upper left drop zone, I'm going to choose this flyby shot. It's looking really good, but let's change the color of the grid since we published it. Before I render and play back, I need to point out that Motion will not allow you to publish audio with your template. If you need audio, you'll need to use audio from one of the clips in the browser. I'll set the edit mode to audio only, then drag this shot of the helicopter below the clip to connect the audio. I'll then press Ctrl R to render, then play back the final effect. So hopefully you'll be able to put that tip to use in the future. I'd be interested in hearing your comments about it. I've also included a link to the motion file directly below. You can download it, open it in motion, and then publish the template I created for you right to Final Cut Pro 10 so you don't have to create it yourself. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time.